in the process of making a garment out of this beautiful striped linen fabric or linen blend fabric I believe that I got from Joann's. I mentioned in my fabric tour video if you've watched that that I was planning to make a tie front shirt hack of the Deer and Doe Bleu dress but the more I looked at it the more I just desperately fell in love with this fabric and realized that if I could I very much wanted to make a dress out of it. So <laughs> instead of a blue dress hack, I'm making a Jennifer Lauren handmade Felicity dress hack. What I did, let me get this pattern over here, is I took the, let's see here. Okay, I took the regular pattern piece, and you can't really tell, this pattern paper is super nice. I got it off of Amazon, I'll link it down below. Up to this point, I've been using just regular sheets of printer paper and taping them together when I needed to trace out a pattern or something. And last year, I ended up investing in a roll of paper over here. <laughs> here we go. It's a roll of paper. I believe it was like a medical paper or a, like a kid's drawing easel refill roll or whatever. And I love it because it is heavier than typical tissue paper, which I absolutely abhor. It is my least favorite pattern paper. So it's heavier weight than that, but it's a lighter weight than printer paper, which can be a little bit difficult to finagle sometimes when I'm trying to do pattern adjustments. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very, very pleased with it. I actually, this was the first time I've used it and it works splendidly. <laughs> so with this one, typically, um, you can't really see on this one. Do I have the other Felicity dress pattern piece to show a comparison? <laughs> it's up here. So I have another tip for you. This is how I typically store my either traced off or PDF pattern pieces. I keep them in my file folder and then my husband, when we got married, he had a filing cabinet, just a small like two drawer one. And the top drawer in there is where I store all of them unless it's one that I'm like working with and then I keep it up on my bookshelf. And so then I just stick them all, all the pieces in here and it's super easy, you couldn't even see that. <laughs> and I'll just label it up here at the top what it is. I like this better than using the, a lot of people will use like page protectors or envelopes. And while I love the idea of having a lot of really pretty envelopes, it can get kind of pricey, whereas these file folder things are super cheap. So <laughs> I am all about that. So the regular, I don't know if you can kind of tell here, the regular Felicity dress has this very strong curve here in the front side, which is amazing for fitting over the bust. It's just such a beautiful pattern design. However, if we're adding a button band onto the front, which is what I wanted to do, I don't think it would work too well. So what I did, let me see if I can kind of show you a comparison, is I basically straightened out and added enough extra at the front so that I could do a fold over button band. I didn't want to do a separate button band that I would have to sew onto it. I wanted it to be an attached button band. And so that's what I've done with here. I've straightened that out, I've added extra, and then I've added extra to fold over. I will also say that because I am currently pregnant, I did raise the waistline, I think about an inch, and I went up a size from what I normally do. Yeah, it's about three quarters of an inch. I went up from a size 14, and this one, she hasn't added the multi cups to it, I don't think. Not yet, so it's just a size 14 was what I had done before, and I went up to a size 16, just as my bust is increasing and whatnot, all that fun stuff with pregnancy that you have to modify all your patterns. So I went up to a size 16 and raised the waistline by about three quarters of an inch. And then for this particular hack, I have, like I said, added that bit at the front to make it a button band. I am going to be putting buttons all the way down the front, including on the skirt. So to do that, I took the back bodice, which normally has a center back zipper, which I love. And I just took off the seam allowance, the 5 8 inch seam allowance, and cut it on the fold. What we're looking at now, I have gotten to the point where I have attached the front and back bodices and it looks so floppy and silly because I haven't gathered the neckline or folded in for the button band so there's a lot of extra fabric on there. But I've done that, I've stitched the darts, stitched the shoulder seams and side seams and finished them with a serger. 
And then what I'm planning to do is I'm going to stitch these down. I don't know if there's a good way to show this. <laughs> so that they will be, they'll lay nice and flat. So instead of just leaving them loose, I'm gonna stitch them down and top stitch them. Couple of tips for you that will make your sewing easier. <laughs> there are two things. I don't know if you were able to see from the footage that I took. Something that I do all the time when I'm sewing is I will do take a tip from quilters, from people that sew a lot of quilts, and do what's called chain piecing, where basically I will start at one seam and then sew as many seams as I can all in a row. It saves thread, it saves time, you don't have to like stop, lift the presser foot, cut the threads, get the fabric underneath, start sewing again. It's way faster, especially, especially for bias binding, which I had to pieced together from scraps. I did not have a lot of this fabric. So basically, especially with a bias binding, you're going to stitch this little seam and then without cutting the threads, you stitch the next one and the next one <laughs> and the next one. And that's called chain piecing, if I remember correctly. I believe that's the correct term. And that is just, it has been something that it really, it speeds things up and you waste less, like I said, less thread and it's super easy to do. And then the next tip that I have for you is to do as many things as you can do before pausing to go and iron. So on here, I have gone ahead, I've stitched my back neckline darts, I've stitched all of these seams, and I've stitched all of my bias binding together. And now I am at a good point where I can pause, I'll do all of that ironing, and then I'm ready to do the next lump of sewing. Makes it way, way faster than doing a seam, ironing it, doing a seam, ironing it, so on and so forth. So those are my two little tips or tricks that I have learned over my sewing time that just, it makes it so much faster and smoother and easier, in my opinion. That's where I'm at with that, and then I'm just gonna be doing a basic gathered skirt, and I have chosen to do it where all of my stripes are gonna be going vertically rather than horizontally. And I'm just gonna do a gathered skirt, out of this and then I'm going to wait to fold the button bands whoops, in on my front bodice until after I have attached the skirt and then I will just fold it in, I'll show you, I'll fold it in across the, all the way from the top, the neckline to the hem. And it's such a lovely way of doing a button band. It's super fast, super easy, you don't have to worry about cutting extra pieces or whatnot. It is definitely one of my favorite ways to do button bands. The Durando Blue Eye dress has it like that. I'm trying to think if there's any other one. I think the Pauline Alice cami dress has the same thing, even though it doesn't go all the way down to the hem, that's how it does it on the that part. <laughs> um, the Jennifer Lauren handmade Asturia dress, that's how it does it. Actually, no, it uses a facing. So there's a few different ways that you can do button bands. One, you can do it, like I said, you put interfacing on and then you just fold it on, it's an attached button band. You can do what's called a detached button band, which the Megan Nielsen Matilda dress has that. But basically, you would sew the dress the dress bodice and the skirt together and then you have one long strip of fabric that you stitch onto that and that's your button band or you can do what's called a facing where you'll stitch your dress and skirt your bodice and skirt all together but then it has just a separate facing piece that you would stitch on and then fold to the inside. The button band piece is going to be seen for the detached button band. I hope I'm making at least a little bit of sense here. I feel like I've been sewing for so long that sometimes I things make sense in my head that probably wouldn't make any sense to a new sewer. But anyway, I am gonna get onto that. I've got a bunch of ironing to do, so let's go ahead and get that done. I'm so excited for this dress. I think it is going to be like the ultimate summery, beautiful button front dress, and I'm really excited to get it done the fabric feels so nice and it's lightweight and drapey and I think it's going to be so airy and just perfect. I'm super super pumped about having switched from a shirt to a dress. Which to be fair, I like dresses, I like making dresses the majority of the time. <laughs> for a little 
check in. <laughs> it's the most gloomy, rainy, thunderstormy day out today. It's definitely been quite rainy this last week, except for Sunday. Sunday was a magical, beautiful, sunny, highs in the mid 70s Fahrenheit and it was glorious. I spent a large portion of the day sitting outside on our back patio reading and it was amazing. Was so lovely. I have made just a little bit of progress on this dress. I didn't really work on it much yesterday. I stitched up the, or ironed up the bias binding that I'll need for finishing off the neckline and the armholes. So that's all done and sorted. And right now I'm in the process of gathering the skirt up to match the waistline of the bodice. And once that's done, then I can work on the button band. I'm making good progress here. <laughs> so I just went through and top stitched. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it. You can kind of see it. Top stitched the seams on the bodice. I just pressed the shoulder seams and the side seams towards the back and then stitched them down because I think it just looks nice. <laughs> and especially with like a shirt, shirt dress style, it just makes it look so finished. And I'm probably gonna do that along the waistline as well. We'll see when I get there. <laughs> but the moment, this is kind of where the magic happens, where it goes from being just two pieces that will eventually go together to being, to looking like an actual dress, which is one of my favorite parts. Attaching the bodice and the skirt at the waist seam just seems to bring everything so much more together and you get a much better idea for what it's gonna look like and kind of try it on if we need to. There's not a lot else to update you on with this. Like I said I haven't really worked on it that much. I was planning to do some sewing over the weekend but then we ended up being busy and then it was such a glorious day outside on Sunday that I just couldn't. I just wanted to be outside in the sunshine all day. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear the rain and the and the thunder outside. It is storming like crazy. <laughs> it was so blustery and stormy in the night it actually woke me up. I try not to mind too much because I know that this is a big part of spring and it's very necessary for making everything so beautiful and green like we all like it in springtime. At least I like it. I don't know about you. I think the only thing that I really don't like about springtime is I do kind of get some allergies and that's not super fun. <laughs> But it's worth it for the beautiful warm weather and sunshine and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so I'm going to go ahead and just finish up this and I'll update you in a bit and we'll see where we're at. that portion of sewing it together and whatnot. And now I have to prep the interfacing for the button band. And another useful thing that I have found is that over my time of sewing, I often collect odds and ends of fusible interfacing. And I save the big usable pieces because very often instances like this, I need long skinny strips of interfacing for button bands. And pieces like this, you can't really cut a whole facing or what have you out of it, but I can definitely cut some long skinny strips out. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going through my bag of scraps and just finding the pieces that I can use to cut narrow, about an inch wide strips of interfacing to put onto the button band for this dress, which is the next step. And then after I do that, I just need to top stitch the button bands. And then from there, I can either finish the neckline with the bias binding, or I can go ahead and put the snaps in. I think I'll finish the neckline and the armholes with bias binding first and then do the snaps. All right, now I have a whole <laughs> little stack of little strips that I need to iron onto the button band. Would it be more convenient to just cut out one long strip from my bolt of interfacing? Yes, absolutely. But I really feel bad about just letting scraps like this go to waste and so I use them all the time when I'm doing zippers or button bands or anything like that. In a space where you need just a narrow strip of interfacing, it's kind of annoying to have to work with a bunch of pieces that are this tiny, <laughs> but totally do that. My words. <laughs> it is definitely worth it because I can use up a bunch of different little scraps and I don't have to go out and constantly be buying whole new long strips of interfacing. So 
It works out. <laughs> I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see in this sliding. Basically, when I put my strips on there, I just overlap them by about half an inch to an inch or so, and then just keep going with the next one. And that's just how I use up all the shorter pieces and whatnot, is it just, just overlap them by a little bit, and it works perfectly fine. Button band is finished, which is always nice because it's not necessarily my favorite part to do, but we got it, it's all done, it's good to go. My thread caught funny and my needle broke, which makes me really sad because it kind of mucked up part of it. Thankfully it's not too noticeable, it's right in there. Yeah, it just snapped the needle off and then I kept sewing for a couple of stitches because I didn't realize it because it wasn't a really loud like snap that sometimes happened with needles breaking. I just replaced the needle and it was all good to go, re-threaded it and everything. I really quick wanted to mention another tip. <laughs> For needles, for used needles, needles that have broken, needles that, you know, have just been used too much, their point is dull. I really recommend finding some sort of a pill bottle or some sort of bottle or container or something. This was something, I think it had probiotics or something, some sort of pill in it. And I have just kept it and I put all of my pins and needles and broken things. Um, I think there's, yeah, there's a serger blade in there. Where did that pin go? There it is. So like for this one, I put it in there because it's just, it's really bent. And there's a couple times where just the heads of my pins have popped off. So I put them in there. And the reason for that, um, and to not just chuck them in the trash, is because there are people that have to handle the garbage bags after we send them off to the dump. And so it's just a nice thing to do to make sure that they don't get stabbed in their hands or legs or whatever it is that is involved with trash disposal. It's just a really nice way and a container like this is gonna last me for forever. I'm not gonna have to throw this away for a very very long time and then I can just chuck the whole container with all of the little bits and pieces of needles and it's a really safe and contained way like this this lid doesn't come open super easily and if you get a pill bottle with a screw lid or something I just I really recommend doing that just because for well for your sake when you're having to empty your trash can and put it into the dumpster and for the sake of the garbage collectors who then have to deal with it afterwards to just put it in some sort of enclosed container I didn't do that for a long time. Shame on me, but I didn't know. Um, I wasn't aware that that was something that I even needed to think about. I just kind of chuck it in the trash. <laughs> just sounds so bad. I think I read about it somewhere or saw something where it said, you know, just be careful of how you dispose of your used needles and whatnot. And I was like, oh, that's a really good point. Because those things, those things are so sharp and they would just go right through gloves or something that people had on like. So that's my tip, but it is now time for me to stop working on sewing. I need to do some AutoCAD drawings. So I'm gonna go get some potato salad and eat my snack and do my actual proper work for the day. <laughs> and then potentially come back to it. I'm not sure I have some errands that I wanna run, go to the library, Walmart, etc. And we'll see, we'll see if I come back to this today. I might not, but I've made a lot of progress. So I'm happy. I have made some good progress on my dress. I didn't end up filming it because I feel like bias binding the armholes of things always puts me on edge just a little bit purely because it's a little fiddly but <laughs> I did it. It looks absolutely splendid. Uh, I'm in the final stretch on this dress now. I'm just so excited. So I've put the gathering stitches around the neckline and all that is left now is to just gather this up, put the bias binding around the neckline hem it and then add some snaps which I'm super excited to show you because I have a new tool. Can I lean out of the way? Wrong way. There we go. This green lever thing over here and it's a new um, snap installing tool which I am so happy to have. I've previously had the handheld pliers for snaps but I tend to have issues with carpal tunnel. Yarn dyeing kind of did that to me and then I also use my hands a lot for knitting and things so using the, the pliers was really rough on my wrists so I finally finally bought this tool this year and I am so happy I've known about it for a few years but it was an investment it's like a hundred and maybe hundred and thirty dollars or something and I was so lucky because I was able to get it on a sale which was amazing it just so happened to be on sale right when I was looking at getting it and I was able to get it and a ton of different snaps all these snaps were super cheap when you got them um, at the place it was camsnaps.com there we go 
And this is like a sample of all the colors that you can get. I just got a selection of basic ones and then a couple of different colors. Like the sagey green and this beautiful pinky color and a blue, which just seems to be kind of my favorite color. So I should really work on making my wardrobe <laughs> match this color palette. And then I just got some basic like cream and then a ton of white snaps. And oh, I got some red ones, forgot about those. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was an amazing deal. I was able to get a bunch of them and then I had, like I said, the actual press tool was on sale. So, oh, <laughs> and I've used it already and I love it. It is so much better than using the hand pliers. But anyway, yeah, so I've got this bias binding on here. It looks super good. I'm so pleased with how it came out. So now we are just going to gather up the neckline and we're just about done. hear the yard work lawn maintenance crew working outside so bear with me. <laughs> I am just about done installing snaps on this dress and I wanted to really quickly show you how I do that with this new um, cam snap plier, not plier, <laughs> press. I'll link it down below. <laughs> but yeah I just really quickly wanted to show you how I do this so Let's get these last couple snaps on here. All right, so first off, I have this whoop, camera strap getting in the way. Hold on. I have this, uh, I don't know, pointy awl thing. I think it came with the original pliers that I had. And I just go wherever it is that I am. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm at that stage of my sewing life where I just eyeball where I'm putting my buttons. <laughs> I poke through both layers of the button bands, not just one, but both of them. And that way I make sure that it gets properly lined up. I move it back and forth a couple of times like that. Then we're going to take the two pokey parts of the snaps. I'm not sure what the technical term for them would be, but we're going to put one through this hole and one on the under hole. I don't know how well you can see that there. There we go. Then we are going to put the bottom snap piece here. You're going to slide it into this underneath part. And then the lever just gets pushed down nice and hard. There's that piece done. And then I'm going to do the top piece. So, and squish that in there. There we go. And that's it, they're both in there. And then I can snap those and repeat the process for the last one. So again, I usually will kind of tug it a little bit like that just to even things out after I finish it. Whoop, that's my phone going off. And pop those together and we are good. Which means that now this dress is completely done except for a hem at the bottom. It is looking so cute. <laughs> Oh goodness, look at how many snaps. One trick I will say that I do typically end up doing, like I said, I'm at the point where I don't exactly precisely measure out my snaps or buttons anymore. I just kind of eyeball it. If I'm doing buttonholes and buttons, I'm a little bit more precise, but with snaps. So one trick that I have found, because I have a full bust, I will usually space the ones that are right over the bodice a little closer together. And then as we get down into the skirt, I will gradually start spacing them further and further apart. And that way you don't have to use quite so many buttons or snaps, but it makes sure that it's not gaping over the, over the bust. The one thing that I'm trying to decide is if I, I think I'll have to try it on and then determine if I need to try and put a snap right up here at the top 
or if I should just leave it open, kind of like the dress that I'm wearing. This is a dress from Old Navy, and there's a button and a buttonhole here, but I never have that button. So I think I'll have to try it on and then see if it looks okay. Oops, I've got some threads to trim here. There we go. Um, and see if I need to add one more snap up there at the top. Because it'll be a little bit bulky just because there's the bias binding, but I think I can make it work. We are just about done. We'll just have to go through and trim all these random stray threads. And I need to hem it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hem it, and then I'm gonna try it on, and we'll see if this has been a success or a failure. <laughs> So now it is time to try it on and make sure that there's no last minute little tweaks that I need to make to it. Then if there is, I can just go ahead and do that really quickly. Just found some more threads to snip. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go try it on. I think it's a success. <laughs> it's a little loose um, and baggy, which is fine. Like I, I am totally happy to have a little bit of extra room in here. Yeah, no, it like, it's crazy bright and sunny and I think it's really cute. I think it turned out quite nicely. <laughs> I think I would like it if the skirt was a little bit more full, but when you're working with what fabric you have, you gotta do what you gotta do. This is literally all the fabric scraps that I have left, which I might be able to piece together into some pockets. I'm hoping I can, because I would love to do some patch pockets on the outside. I think that would be really neat, especially if I could do them in the opposite direction. Oh, that would be so cute. <laughs> We'll see. I have to. I have to see if I can um, work something out. That is. This is all that I have left, <laughs> which is kind of cool. You know, you get all of the scraps of it out. But yeah, I think this. I think this was a success of a hack. I'm gonna turn my camera so I can give you some uh, full shot views. That worked. Okay. Ignore my socks and slipper thing that we got going on here. Move my chair. Yeah. <laughs> It's definitely bright for me. Very, very bright. But I think it's really cute and it'll be so nice in summertime. It's very lightweight. Almost see-through when it's not on. It's definitely not see-through on. Yeah, and I ended up, I picked this color of snaps, which you can kind of see, because it was a very close match to the thread I used for top stitching. I think this is pretty good. And it covers the bump. <laughs> which has become much more bumpy since I started making this dress. I think it's good. There's a little bit of extra room in here. Not a ton, but there's a little extra room in there. And there's plenty of room in the skirt. <laughs> Overall, I think this was a, a definite success. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I just need to wear it for a little bit, make sure that it all fits and feels good, but I think it is lovely. So that about finishes up this particular sewing sew with me vlog. I love the, the the when you're finally able to try on the thing that you've been working on and when it works it's so satisfactory. But I think that's about all that I have to say for this video. I might try and pop in some if I put some pockets on it or whatever I might try and pop in some like more nice shots of me wearing the dress but we'll see i feel like i've definitely given you a pretty good idea of what it looks like thank you very very much for watching this video and hanging out and sewing with me it was a lot of fun i'm really excited to pick out the next fabric to use to finish using up my stash um, so stay tuned for that that'll be coming out at some point here. I'd say like if you have the Jennifer Lauren handmade Felicity dress pattern, definitely give it a shot. It's super customizable, you can hack it, and I have loved working with it every time. <laughs> so yeah, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and cut things off here before I keep rambling and getting sidetracked. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon on the next one. Bye! Bye.